all the Formula student teams who are going for racing slip tires for their vehicles. If you want to design a vehicle simulation model for your car, many teams have asked us for guidance on vehicle simulation model. And the only thing that you need for that is the tire model because you know the only thing that is actually making your vehicle connect to the ground, which is holding your vehicle to the ground, is your tires. And there are certain set of data for that tire which gives you an idea of what lateral and longitudinal force your tire will be generating. So this tire model is provided to you by the manufacturers or you may also uh, buy the tire and get it tested at a testing facility. But that is not a feasible option if you are a, you know, a formula student team working in a limited budget because for this, uh, for tire testing, you'll have to have one tire which will go, which will be tested thoroughly and you can't use it after that. Then the, the fees for uh, the testing facility, a lot, you know, the tire is actually run for a long time, for a long duration. So the fees is also very high. So it is not feasible for the teams to go for tire testing. Fine. So what uh, the good tire providers like uh, Avon, we normally, uh, the, we actually provide Avon tires and Avon is also our sponsors. So Avon provide uh, these data to Formula Student teams free of cost on their website. Many companies do it, it's not just that Avon does it. But you make sure that whatever... Ah. So if at any particular time, at any particular moment, on a particular tire, if you are able to find out these three factors, then you can get an idea of what this and this will be. And if you get an idea of what this and this will be, you get an idea of how much uh, you know force you will be exerting on the, in the longitudinal direction and how much force you are exerting in the lateral direction. So if I'm taking a turn, then how fast I can take the turn and how in, how much intense that turn can be. You can actually get a feel of that. And if you can analyze that on all the corners, you can start getting an idea of how your car will be behaving. It's not a simple manual calculation that you can do because since we are talking about simulation throughout the track, so car will be moving throughout the track and you have to analyze it different. Like it's not that it's for just one slip angle or if you turn the steering wheel by two degrees, suppose. Then you also have to repeat all the calculations if you want to see for three degrees. So just manual calculations won't help here. You have to have some platform on which you can make a simulation model. Generally what all student teams prefer is MATLAB. And being an engineer you must be having a very, not very good idea but at least you should be able to use MATLAB. Fine. For simulation, again you go to another module provided by MATLAB which is Simulink. A very comfortable and so far the best tool that is available for simulation. I will not say best but still, you know, it's very convenient, it's very easy to learn. And you can know whatever you want to know through these two things, MATLAB and Simulink. Fine. So, we will come to this later. First of all, how these factors affect longitudinal and lateral forces. Now first of all, let's talk about what these factors are. This is a tire on the ground. This Suppose this is the suspension that you are working on, uh, I mean that you have on your car. This is your, um, okay fine, this is the tire. Now there is a weight of your car which is acted, being acted on this tire which is W, fine. Then if you are having wings, you are going at a good speed that you are actually having some downforce as well. Then of course you have some downforce. So all the vertical forces, fine. And suppose if you are accelerating and there is a lot of, uh, you know, load transfer in your vehicle, then of course on another force will be acting in the upward direction. So some of all the vertical forces that will be acting on your tire will give you FZ is sum of all vertical forces. 
So this is FZ. Now what is slip angle? Now let's look at the uh, look at the vehicle from the top. So these are the four tires that I'm having. Okay. So this is your body in the middle. These are the four tires that you are having. I have cleared the board for clearly, uh, you know, making you understand what slip angle is. So, if suppose I'm having four wheels, of course I have four wheels, and this the four wheels. And if I go into a turn, then this is the direction, and I have to go take a turn. So, suppose this is the initial position of the tire, and then I position my tire like this. Fine. So this I have turned my vehicle and my tire is now pointing this way. So uh, in, in, in any situation, the moment you turn, your vehicle will not start moving exactly in this direction. What will actually happen is that if you are turning the tire this way, this is the vertical, this is the normal straight, then your vehicle will be going this way. Right? So when your vehicle is going this way, this is the position, this is the angle of the tire, this angle is known as the slip angle. Okay? What is slip ratio? Now, uh, when you are accelerating, you know, the wheels are rotating, you will never find in a running car a condition of perfect rolling. Tire will not be rolling. There will be certain amount of slip in the tire. Fine. So the ratio between the, the slip velocity and the actual rotating velocity is actually the slip ratio. Fine. So these are the three factors that really matter when you are talking about this. Uh, the, the, two, the, the longitudinal force and the lateral force. Now, let's take, obviously if I am saying that my lateral force is dependent upon the slip angle alpha, then of course there must be a graphical representation of this relationship. Yes. Suppose if I put little force in the y direction. Now there is a convention that if your uh, slip angle is, uh, you know, many in different uh, places, different convention is followed. So if it is towards the right, then it is considered as positive. If it is towards the left, it is considered as negative. So you can go through all the literature that is available and you will be able to find what all conventions are there. Really there are these two conventions. So this is and similarly this uh, uh, slip angle as well. Right? So if the slip angle is towards the right, people, many people call it positive, many people call it negative and just the opposite. Fine. So this is the lateral force, this is the slip angle. What we find is that the slip, the lateral force increases with slip angle and then goes down like this and then becomes constant something something like this you'll find this is the relationship that you normally find in slick tires that lateral force increases as slip angle goes uh, increases and then at a particular point it becomes maximum and then it starts going down and it gets mirrored like this over here fine so just signs are changing but if you are understanding this then this is no different from this. Fine. So, <coughs> uh, this is the curve at, at a particular FZ. Now, suppose, what is FZ? Vertical load. So, at, for, at one vertical load, this is the curve that I am finding. So, FZ1, this is the relationship. Now, if I go to FZ2, FZ, now suppose FZ1, FZ2 is greater than FZ1. Fine. The curve will be like this. So as you go on increasing the vertical load, start. This is the kind of relationship that we see between lateral force and slip angle. Okay. Now similarly, if we talk about uh, longitudinal force, then longitudinal force depends upon the slip ratio. 
depends upon slip ratio. See, normally we will represent these curves with lateral force is generally linked to slip angle, longitudinal force is generally linked to slip ratio, but they are also interlinked to one another. Let's first discuss this relation. Similar to the graph, fx and this becomes uh, this this is fx line this is slip ratio r okay here also you'll find somewhat similar but it's like this see it does not have to fall all the way down in some cases it goes straight as well it may not be that steep fine but it peaks at a particular point and then it reduces fine now generally what happens is in some cases you will also find if you are running at a zero camber angle if there is no camber at all fine then at zero slip there is no lead to a longitudinal force so if your tire is not having a certain amount of slip now literally speaking about slip you will not see the tire slipping of course but there is always a slip that is there in the tire and that slip is responsible for generating this longitudinal force so if you are if in a perfect rolling condition you will not be having any longitudinal force at all now let's see how lateral force and longitudinal force are interlinked which is a very interesting concept known as the traction circle okay now what is the tra traction circle of course it is a circle in a graphical form this is the y axis, this is the x axis and everything now normally people represent longitudinal force on x axis lateral force on y axis fine so this traction circle is actually the relationship between the longitudinal force and lateral force at suppose a particular vertical load fine so see there are three factors if you are varying the two the one has to be the same otherwise you know you can't work out a relationship so if you change this then this whole figure will actually shift somewhere else so <clears throat> suppose if I have to derive a relationship then my vehicle if suppose if I am uh, over uh, if suppose I am moving on this traction circle fine let's suppose I am taking a turn and I am generating the maximum lateral force that my vehicle can produce at this particular load that is over here of course, this is the circle, this is the maximum that the vehicle, lateral force that the vehicle can generate, right. So, if I am generating the maximum lateral force, then what is the corresponding longitudinal force? Zero. Fine. So, that means that if you are turning at a particular G, fine, the maximum capability of your car, then you cannot accelerate as your own vision will. It depends upon the traction circle of the truck of the tire fine if suppose i am accelerating maximum then i can't turn at the same time now you just imagine you just start getting a feel of you, you driving the car you are in the middle of the turn fine and at times you find that if you put in more gas if you uh, you know press your accelerator you are not able to stay in the turn you start going out you start moving out of the turn why this happens because of the traction circle so you are turning suppose over here then you are over here fine so the fy that you are generating is fy1 and the fx corresponding will be fx1 right so if you are generating this much lateral force you cannot go uh, to a longitudinal force more than this if you start going you are out of the traction circle your tire cannot take this and you start moving out because that, that tire, tire starts losing grip fine now you have four tires you have four tires each tire is having a particular limit fine each tire is having a limit every tire has a traction circle right so if you talk about the whole vehicle then the whole vehicle also has a limitation in terms of a circle it's not a perfect circle normally in this case also it's not a perfect circle it's generally something uh, you know not that uniform as a circle but 
you can compare it to a circle. In this case, if you talk about the whole vehicle, then you talk about GG diagram. And you don't represent, this in, uh, represent it in terms of force also. You represent it in terms of acceleration, in terms of acceleration due to gravity. So 1G, 2G, 3G, fine. Uh, how much ever you are accelerating, you have to put in that value. And uh, you get to know what is the limit of your vehicle. Fine. The maximum trim of your vehicle. So if suppose this is my GG diagram of the vehicle, I would ask my driver to drive at the edge of this. If I want the maximum performance from my car, my driver should be on the edge of this GG diagram. If he is driving too much inside the GG diagram, if he is driving too much inside the GG diagram, there is a problem. Fine? Because he is not utilizing all the forces that the tire can provide. If he goes outside the GG diagram, the car will be going out of the track. The car will not be moving in the track in the first place. Right? So, <clears throat> this is a very interesting concept that normally dictates the performance of the vehicle. Fine. What is the role of a designer in terms of GG? See, you can't change this. Can you? You can't. Yes, of course you can. By varying these factors, vertical load. If you have more vertical load, then the circle will be bigger. Right? But this is the property of the tire. But as far as this is concerned, then there are a lot of components that are involved in a vehicle. It's not just the tire. Tire is linked to your suspension system which has your springs, dampers, anti-roll bars, torsion bars, whatever you are putting in. And of course, at the end of the day, all of it is a form of a spring. Your tire is also a form of a spring. It's a rubber. There is a spring rate of the tire. And then your uh, so various suspension components are also having springing action. Right? So by designing your uh, suspension systems in the right way, you can actually play around with this. And your aim will be to maximize this GG diagram. You know, give your driver more space to drive. If my GG diagram will be so small, then every time the driver is going into a corner, he is hitting gas, he is going out of the GG diagram. So the car is not performing that well. If I can increase this GG diagram, of course, my driver has more space to drive. Right? He can go into the corner fast, he can come out of it fast. So, and generally all of racing is dictated, all of uh, circuit racing is dictated by how fast you can go in and out of a corner. Fine. So, here, you as a designer come into picture. Uh, of course, you cannot be very uh, sophisticated in terms of designing this because even professional racing teams, uh, you know, break their heads, they suffer a lot in getting an accurate simulation model, model for their vehicle. Fine. So even they are not able to make a simulation model that can exactly simulate their car. Why? Because on the track conditions are also there, which is very difficult to understand. Fine. It takes a lot of time to go into the go on the track to research to find out what are the various factors that are playing a role. So a lot of uh, data collection is required, and then that data collection has to be uh, you know given to your model. Then the model has to understand that what where are the loopholes, where are the places where you know some other factors are coming into picture, and that model has to accommodate those fact uh, those uh, factors as well. Fine. So one such factor is the road camber. Right? Road camber also affects your lateral forces. If you are not taking them into picture, then you are actually losing on something. Fine? So you have to consider all these factors and then you come up with a simulation model. But as a student team, at least uh, you, know, you must go and understand these parameters and make a simulation model for a vehicle. Now, <coughs> You cannot find out the lateral and longitudinal forces of these tires. Suppose if you are having certain, if you are having an even tire, fine. So I am having an even 7.2 by 20.0 13. These are the kind of tires that are available for formula soon. So if you are having this tire, then to understand the various parameters, you know, you, you to make a simulation model for your vehicle. You have to understand what are the various FX and FY values at different uh, factors, vertical load, at different slip angles, at different slip ratios. So these 
parameters are provided by the tire manufacturer itself. Normally, all of them don't test the tire and provide you these values, but they get the tire tested and provide you these values in terms of Excel files, in terms of MATLAB files, in terms of graphs and table charts. And then you can use those factors, you can go use those values in work, uh, you know, while you are working on the car, on your car. So, Avon provides all these data. Avon is uh, uh, very much interested in working with the Formula student teams. So, they have made all the tyre data of their racing tyres available on their website itself. So, if you go on Avon Motorsports. .com. Fine. There you will find formula suited tires, you will find a pull down menu. Downloads, you go into the download sections and you will find formula student. And normally four kind of tires are recommended for formula student, but uh, you will find only the tire data for three tires. All the 13 inch rim tires, you will find all the data for that. Generally, people use 13 inch. Hardly anyone uses a 10 inch rim. So generally people go for a 13 inch rim, so all that data you will be able to find. So all these graphs between FY and slip angle, fine. Between, uh, there is something known as an aligning self-aligning talk, fine. So if you are turning and then there is a tendency of the wheel to self-align itself. So all that data, self-aligning talk with slip angle, their variation in terms of chart, in terms of graphs, they are available on the website itself. And then of course, the one very important factor that people consider, they have to consider is the spring rate of the tire. You know, at different pressures, the spring rate of the tire changes. It also changes at various, uh, sort of, uh, at various uh, camera angles as well. So all that data is given in the form of Excel and Word files. So you can take all that data down from over there and you can use it in your model. We can also help you in working out a MATLAB code, a MATLAB simulation uh, model for your vehicle. So you can use all that data, put it in your model, and then you see all the information. On that model, you see all the information that you want for your vehicle. So if you make a track, if you make a sample track, suppose if I make a skid pad, for example, and if I feed in that skid pad into my simulation model, then I'll get to know how my car is moving on that. Fine. Of, and you have to give in the values of course that at a particular moment what is the steering input that you are giving and all that. So if you are, uh, it also depends upon how sophisticated the model is, fine. So if you want to find out the best lap time for your vehicle on a particular particular circuit, you can also do that with the help of mat balance and simulation model. So we can help you out in making that. But you, one thing you have to make sure that the tire data, whatever tire you are using, you are using if you are using Avon, if you are using Hoosier, if you are using Goodyear, if you are using any tire, you make sure that you have the tire data. You know, people have started working now. Generally, what happens? Everyone in a Formula Stone team, if you go abroad, everyone has this data. Everyone is working on it. Everyone will be a very generalized one, but still, the best one of the best teams. Some of the best teams they are working and it's not a difficult task to work on. 